Hi friends, Magus Supreme here coming at you guys with another reading. So for this reading, I'm deciding to do you guys' personal February 22, 2022 <laughs> personal predictions. That's a mouthful. So the way that I had this reading set up is that I pulled only Major Arcana and there will be four cards in the spread and each one of the cards will represent a week in February. Um, the day you know will work and will build from the energy from there. So for pile selection, you guys, uh, I have uh, major arcana cards for you guys to pick from. Just pick whichever one is resonating with your energy, the picture. If you're a tarot reader, then you kind of already can cheese the system. But for the most part, you know, just try to pick from the energy and, you know, really try to fill this and not just, you know, Pick whatever card you think is the best. <laughs> so with that out of the way, let's get into pile selection. So for pile one, we have the magician. Let me make sure that this is where you guys can see it. I'll move it up close. Boom. For pile two, we have the hanged man. For pile three, we have death. For pile four, we have the lovers. So pick whatever pile is resonating with you. Uh, you know, you can rewind, do what you gotta do to really pick your pile. But now that that's out of the way, we're gonna get into the reading. So if you chose the Magician card, uh, Pile 1, then this reading is for you. But before we get into the reading, I do want to tell you guys thank you for all the support and the love that you've given me so far. Um, everything is like truly appreciated and I came a, a very long way from when I first started this channel. And I just really want to put some love, appreciation, and gratitude out there for the people who watch, even if you don't leave a like, even if you don't comment, even if you don't share, or even if you're not even subscribed. I still want to just give thanks for you even like watching the channel, for you even just coming around. So thank you for sharing your energy with me. But if you guys do want to support this channel, the links to do so are always in the description box. Uh, if you want to, if you want, you can book a reading with me. You can donate decks, which I truly love, or you can even just donate money if that's your thing. Any way that you decide to support my channel is welcomed, and I thank you for it. So with that out of the way, let's get to your reading, Pile 1. So you guys chose the Magician card, and one of the biggest things that I got here is that something is about the man. Is this is going to be a month where... You either become more focused or something is just going to like appear in your life. Um, the magician card to me speaks of intention, of will, of direction. It's like really just putting a whole bunch of things together. Like I see that like, like you know, like a, like a scientist, putting a whole bunch of chemicals and things together and seeing what results you can produce. This works in tandem with the sacred traveler oracle that I plucked for you guys. Um, this is... This Oracle card is about the lesson, the theme, and the energy about your February. And what we have here is crossing bridges. And it says it's time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. Now, this talks, this talks a lot about entering a new phase into your life. And this could be a new phase that you guys have manifested. But it also talks about the need for for releasing things that no longer serve you or reconnecting to people and places that you miss or that's coming in and wants a, a different, another chance with you. Um, you guys can take that however you want to take it, whether you want to burn your bridges or whether you want to mend them. It's completely up to you and your discretion and your intuition. But I'm always for, you know, mending bridges instead of just burning them. As someone who burns a lot of bridges in their own life, <laughs> in their own life, it pays to have people, it pays to have friends, and it pays to not only offer forgiveness, but to give a second, sometimes even third chance. And if someone takes advantage of your second and third chance, then you leave that up to karma. You leave that up to father to deal with them. But that's my personal philosophy. That's how I live my life. You guys don't have to do that. It's all up to you. 
So with that out of the way, let's get into your February. Um, each one of these cards represents your uh, a week. So for your first week of February, my true love gave to me. Say like, no. Uh, first week of February, you have the High Priestess. Second week of February is Zawaldo, or the world, for my more normies. Third week is the moon. And for the fourth week, we have the chariot. So just from looking at the energies all together, I can tell that this is going to be like a lot of like... <laughs> exactly what this card, the Crossing Bridges, uh, represents. There's going to be a lot of completion and a lot of intuitively led endings and beginnings in February. February might really be a very busy and, like, personally enriching month. I don't know if there's going to be, like, a lot of, like, things, like, in terms of, like, the external happening for you guys this month. Um, I also feel like this pile might have been drawn to another pile as well, but this whole prediction here is centered around you, yourself, your willpower, and your internal and spiritual connection. Um, and this is very clear to me. With the first week of February being the High Priestess, I see you guys spending a lot of time alone and by yourself and connecting. Um, the thing about the High Priestess card is that the High Priestess is the, is the card of the intuitive. It's the Divine Feminine card. Your first week of February is going to be spent mostly with yourself, probably in meditation, maybe even reading a book like she is here, or just like doing things that's like really personally enriching to you. Um, I'm really hearing like it's going to be time spent with you and your spirit guides. You might really be feeling more so alone, but not lonely. That uh, that first week of February, I really feel a, a sense of contentment with being alone for the first week. And I really think that's a really good thing here. Um, one of the things that I'm also feeling for the high priestess is this is really going to be your time to reconnect, not only to like yourself, but to your spirit guys. Like, I really feel like you guys are going to be engaged in like heavy meditations for the first week, or maybe just even just doing things that's personally enriching or personally fulfilling for you. And, you know, that's a beautiful thing because in the second week we have the world. And I feel like this is where the energy of the crossing bridges come in. And in, in this, in the second week of February, the world speaks of like a completion, a wrapping up, and also rewards. Um, something that you could have been trying to manifest with the magician card here, something that you've been trying to manifest and put a lot of energy into. And that's probably what you're doing in the first week of February as well with the high priestess, making sure you give whatever it is that you've been manifesting a little extra oomph, making sure that you truly align to it. By the second week of February, you're going to reach it and something is really going to come into fruition for you guys. Um, you might end up getting signs that something is ready or like something is just right around the corner. But this is like really good energy. And this is really like, you know, the start and the, the start and the finish of something. Uh, put, be prepared for like maybe an old lover, old friend or old family member trying to come in to talk to you and like try to reconnect or probably just notice that you've been to yourself for a while and wanted to come in and talk and check on you. Um, like I said, it's up to your discretion, your intuition on what you decide to do. If you're just going to decide like, no, I don't want this person in my life. I'm going to, you know, ignore them. Then by all means, that's your prerogative. But if you're going to decide to like open up your energy, open up your heart and like really engage, I really feel like it can be like some bit, some benefit to you. So with the world card, the second week of February, I'll pull some cards to get some the day by day for, for uh, February. I'll pull seven cards starting from Monday through Sunday on, um, yeah, I think I, I'll start from Monday. I'm actually hearing it should be from Sunday through Monday. So I will consider, we'll, we'll say that the week starts on, on Sunday, even though we typically consider it the weekend. I really feel like Sunday through Monday is like what spirit wants. So know that this is going to be like, uh, yeah, this is going to be from, I don't know, some either the 7th or the 8th of February. And that's going to be the start of the second week, the 7th or the 8th. And I think it might be the 8th, but we'll see. But yeah, I, I, it's from Sunday through Monday. 
It's not it's not phrased like it's not set up like our traditional calendar, so it might be a little weird, but it is what it is. I'ma just listen to what spirit tells me and I'ma just be the messenger. So don't shoot me. <laughs> I don't know if all of these are in frame, so I might just have to move this back a little bit more to make sure that everything is in frame. So here we go. So yeah, starting from Sunday and then on Saturday. Sunday, here we have you, still in that high priestess energy of the intuition card with Mercury and Cancer. Mercury and Cancer spend a lot of their time reading books, <laughs> being in their home and like really trying to do things in their home, whether it's entertaining or things of that nature. One of the other things that I'm feeling here with the intuition card, like I said, you guys could be spending a lot of time in meditation and doing things that's personally enriching. And at the very start of the second week, that that will that will that's going to continue, especially since this is the card of intuition. Now, starting on Monday, here we have Saturn and Capricorn with the Riches card. This is where I feel like whatever it is that you've been manifesting and that you've really been trying to work on is going to come into play, especially since we have Saturn and Capricorn. And even the card here is about riches. Now, this doesn't have to be like physical or financial riches. What I really feel like is that this is just results. You're going to start seeing results from whatever it was that you've been working on, whatever it is that you've been trying to achieve. Those results are going to come in on, the, on, on Monday, the second week of February on a Monday. Here on a Tuesday, we have the card of companionship, which is Moon and Libra, the seventh house, which is the, the house of relationships. Like I said, there could be someone that's really going to come in on the second week of February and try to reconnect. And like I said, the choice is always yours because that's one thing that Libra is about is the choice of making a decision. Um, someone here is going to want to try to come in and be your friend, be a companion, really try to reintegrate themselves into your life or probably just to check up on you. But either way, what you're going to do is your decision, Pile One. For Wednesday, we have the card of defense. The card of defense tells me like, you know, you this person coming in and really trying to reconnect with you. Not only are you going to deal with it on that day, but you're also really going to like have feelings about it the next day. This is like energy that's really going to carry over. The defense card is challenging you to really think about your morals, your values, and what it is that you believe in. Get clear on what your heart wants, what your intuition is telling you, and what you really feel like is right for you and right for everyone involved. Um, and that's the important part there. Not just what's right for you, but right for everyone. Um, really think about whether this person uh, deserves a second a second chance or maybe even a third one if you are on a third chance. Whatever it is, it's up to you to, pick, to decide your choice and to really stick to your guns. And then we have here the moon and cancer, the card of friendship. The fact that we have two fourth, fourth house cards talk about like the, a lot of things happening in the home, a lot of activity that's like really personally connected to you, a lot of things that's really going to affect you in a certain way. What's funny is that both of the moon cards talk about companionship and friendship. And it really, and I really, really feel like with these two cards together, both being in the moon, like you guys could possibly use a friend or use a companion. I really feel like you guys should welcome in whatever energy, whatever person is really trying to come in, even if it's just like on a trial basis. But whatever it is, that's the energy that I'm getting here is that open yourself up to the possibility of friendship and the possibility of having a companion. Um, I don't feel love energy here. I just really feel like someone just coming in and checking on you, someone that you possibly haven't talked to in a while. And I really feel like the energy is to, to mend or either just to release this and once and for all. But you guys, intuition is the king of that. You guys are going to choose what you're going to do. Let me see. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Here is Friday. Friday, we have the card of Venus and Gemini, the card of flattery. Um, what's funny here is that it really seems like there's going to be a lot of communication and a lot of talking that day. Um, if you guys do decide to bring in this person and, you know, on this was what, on Tuesday, fr 
Friday, if you guys really talk consistently, like throughout throughout the uh, thing, and if this is someone of the opposite sex or someone that you know you has romantic interest in in you, that's really going to become apparent on Friday. Like you know, there's going to be some chatting back and forth, or maybe just some chatting in one way. Um, you know, just soft words. You know, a little little light flirtation. That's really going to come in. Don't don't think it's going to be something serious or someone just trying to you know re you know date you all over again and, and try to put you into a serious commitment. Like no, it's just going to be light flirting. And I really feel like it it should kind of be welcomed in your life. Like especially if you've been you know the high priestess, you are alone and you're fine alone. And that energy is even like up to here. But I really feel like you should open yourself up to this energy just a little bit. Just just play with the idea. And then finally, on Saturday, we have Mercury in the 12th house with inspiration. Um, the Saturday and then this week and uh, good branching into the next week, we see that you guys might really you might get a spark of inspiration from your from your intuition. Maybe it's going to be a new project to start or a new idea or something new to take this place. And I really feel like it might come about from this from this person or this companion that's re-entering into your life. They could, like, really do you guys talking, friendship, and, like, reconnecting. They could, like, give you just an idea out of random, like, on where you can take something or something new that you can do. But either way, I really feel like inspiration is going to strike, and you're going to really feel guided to really do something new. Or, like, your the, the communication is going to come in that's really going to spark a brand new thought inside of you, Power One. So for the next month, for the next week, we have the moon card. The moon card tells me that this is going to be a very intuitively guided week, just like the uh, the first week of this month. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to say is that uh, Febu uh, Valentine's Day is also on the second week of February as well. And that could be like the flattery card as well. Like, you know, you're, you're some people coming in and talking to you about Valentine's Day, doing a little bit of a light flirty. So... That's something else that I that I channeled there and I, that I forgot to say. And I think Valentine's Day, uh, February fourteenth, is a Friday. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm I think it might be. So the next thing we have here is yeah, back to the moon. Intuitively guided. Uh, the moon is a mystery. Uh, I really feel like you're not really. I, what's going to happen here is just like things are just going to happen. You're going to end up going with the flow of your life again. Um, I, yeah, you're going to go with the flow. Whatever whatever new direction you're going in, whatever is happening or changing for uh in the second week, you're gonna roll with it during the third week. Whether it's like you deciding to be alone and like reject this offer of companionship and friendship, or rather you accept it and you just like rolling along with it. Either way, it, you're gonna be following your intuition and you're gonna really just see where it's gonna lead you. And you're not really gonna know where. But as we can see on the fourth week, there's a sense of freedom that comes about you with the chariot ending, ending your, your month of February, Pile One. With the chariot ending your, your February, um, whatever, is, whatever is happening, whatever is going on, you guys are really going to feel personally liberated. You guys are going to feel <laughs> like there's a sense here of like achievement, of completion, and like a moving on and a progression. Whatever has been finished on the second week and you're deciding to start on the second and third week, you're just going to you're going to be really happy about the new direction that you're going in and you're going to continue to push forward. And you're going to like, you know, I'm hearing like right off into the sunset. One thing that I forgot to do for the second week is I pull a monology card. So let's just head back to the second week real quick and let me pull this card for you guys. <sighs> Let me card for the second week of February. Mm, it's this one. <laughs> it's time to release negativity. Well, I guess we know what, what you guys are going to choose. Yeah. I guess we know what you guys are going to choose at the bottom a new romantic cycle begins. So, yeah, if it is a lover from the past, you guys might wholeheartedly reject them and be okay with that choice. Like, I've, just from how the rest of your month flows, Power One, you're going to be a-okay with that choice. You're not going to regret it at all. You're going to feel personally empowered, and you're going to keep it pushing no matter what. So, let's pull some more cards for, uh, let's stick to day by day for 
your fourth week in February. And we're going to begin on, a, on that Sunday. Fortune. Enterprise. Status. Yes, Jupiter. Concentration. Principle. And decision. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more card. And seven. Escape. All right. All right. All right. All right. On Sunday, we have a sun card, the card of fortune. Uh, fortune talks about like, you know, big. It's not about like money coming in, but it's about just like feeling like the energy of the universe. Like this chariot card and this fortune card is very, very telling. Like you are going to be happy as hell <laughs> starting in the last week of February. Something really good probably happened in the second or third week. Uh, I'm leaving the third week of mystery. So, you know, we're going to leave that there. <laughs> but something is going to really make you feel so empowered and so happy starting off your fourth week. And probably not feel the energy of something that's happening in the third week. But you're going to feel empowered. You're going to feel creatively powerful. And whatever it is that you're going to be working on, you're going to really feel like the benefits and the rewards are just coming in from your hard work, from your creative expressions. The next card we have is Jupiter and Aries. Whatever it is, like this inspiration was from the second week that you carried into the third, you're going to feel really empowered to continue on with it. And you're going to find a, a good amount of like luck in whatever it is that you decide to do. Because on Tuesday, we have the card of status. The card of status uh, represents a warning that, you know, don't be too focused on a monetary gain or like don't be too focused on the outcome of it. But it also talks about luck. And a bun a luck in the area of material success and material wealth. Like you guys could really like have like a, a, a slight windfall of, of some some money coming in, especially with the fortune card starting it off. Like you guys could have some money coming in that you guys can put towards your new enterprise or whatever it is that you're deciding to do what you felt inspired to do. Um Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is the card of concentration, right in the middle of the week. Focus. Whatever this new enterprise is, whatever it is that you're deciding to work on and to pick up pile, uh, pile one from like either the second or the third week, you need to make sure that you're putting your energy into it and you're not allowing yourself to be distracted. That you put your energy into it, you put the time and the effort and give it exactly what it deserves. Because on Thursday, we have another Jupiter card and Sagittarius talking about principle. Jupiter and Sagittarius uh, talks a lot about like how you're going to find luck and abundance in the area of higher learning or in religion and moral philosophy. If you guys are doing something that's like that might be a little bit more spiritual in nature, um, be prepared to like really like see some returns there as well. The other things that I'm getting from the principal card is that if you guys are like, you know, maybe like priest or something like that. Let me see. What else am I getting from principal? Because we do have the high priestess, so that, that that does make sense. Like, you could be a priestess or a priest in a different sense of the word. But either way, like, if your work is centered around helping others and enriching the mind of other people, you're going to get a big boon and blessing in whatever it is. But what I really feel like, because the next day on Friday, we have indecision. But another thing that I'm getting here from the principal card is that on Thursday, you're what you believe, your core value and your core beliefs are going to be questioned. You're going to have you have to ask yourself, what is it that you really want? What is it that you truly believe? And you're going to have to start making a decision on whatever it is that you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Like whether it's taking whatever it is that you're building in a new direction, you have to decide if that new direction really aligns with your morals and your values. Um, because you might start seeing some success, but you have to really ask yourself, like, is this really what I want? Okay, that's a weird, that's a weird thing. But yeah, because at the end of the week on Saturday, we have escape. Escape talks about like, just like denial of reality. Talks about wanting to like not see things for as it is. And like really just like wanting to like mentally, spiritually and emotionally escape from a challenging situation. Um, but the other thing that I felt around this card real heavy was that this is like more of an escape from a situation that's been causing you grief. Like whether it's been around like your finances or something of that nature, or whether it's just been emotional turmoil 
or something that you really felt like needed to be laid to rest, you're going to get like some relief in that area and you guys should be really expecting that. So let's pull a Moonology card for this, uh, for the fourth week in February for you, Pile One. I feel like this is going to be a long reading. Oh, adjustments are required. Yeah. Your dreams, and also at the bottom deck, we have your dreams need a practical plan. That's exactly the energy of concentration here. Like, whatever it is that you guys are going to decide to do, like I said, with the indecision and the escape card, you're going to really have to decide what it is that you want to do and really, really question yourself on the direction that you're going or that you're going to decide to take. You're going to be really happy and really excited about this new enterprise, but you really got to make sure that it's truly aligned with you and who you are and what you believe in. So let's get, let's pull one of these star code cards because I feel guided to pull this. North Node, funny, the future. This is about you stepping into your, stepping into something that's fated for you, into a destiny, something that's destined for you, and making sure that whatever it is that you're doing is in alignment with your life purpose and your path in life. Um, this feels really deep, Pile One, because the North, whenever the North Node does appear, whenever we are talking about the North Node, it's very deep and very, very intensely spiritual, but also practical energy. So, yeah. Do you guys will will know more so what this is, and we'll see what it what what comes about. But just know that in the last week of February, like you are going to feel free, and you are going to have a sense of abundance and, and like some money rolling in. But now that you're getting that money, you gotta really realize: are you going to let the money change you, or are you going to let it make you into a better person, and like really use it to support what it is that you truly believe in, Pile One. Either way. It's up to you, and it's up to you to decide how you want your story to play out. And with that, Paul One, we will end your reading there. Be blessed, and have a wonderful day. If you chose the hangman card, pile two, then this reading is for you. Um, one thing I want to say is thank you guys for supporting my channel so far. Um, we really, I really came a long way here from just barely topping out at like 50 subscribers. And now I'm close to like 180. So we were seeing very slow but steady growth here. And I'm very appreciative of everything and the journey that Father has me on with this with this YouTube channel. Um, I'm very thankful for everything. I'm thankful for your guys' support. So if you guys want to continue to support my channel, uh, the links to do so are always in the description box. You can donate Amazon that I mean donate Dex to the channel from Amazon. You can book a reading with my uh, detailed information that's in the description box, or you can even donate money if that's your twist. Any way that you decide to support my channel is very welcomed. And I thank you for the support that you've gave me so far, Pile 2. So with that out of the way, let's get into your reading. So Pile 2. Uh, the first card that you picked, well, the card that you picked is the Hanged Man. The Hanged Man here talks to me about a sacrifice that needs to be made. Uh, right now, you could be feeling like your life is at a standstill, that you're just in a period of where... Nothing is tent is nothing is moving. Um, another thing that I see here on this card is a uh, Libra and thirty. Um, you know, like you guys could be turning thirty, and uh, in February you wouldn't be a Libra if your birthday's in February. So I won't say that. Yeah, I think Libra's a spring month, but you guys could also be turning thirty, or you could have some sort of Libra placement somewhere. Um, I forgot what the hangman is actually like rolled over, but whatever. 
But yeah, what I'm getting here, guys, is that, you know, this is going to be a very formative month to you. You're being called to sacrifice or to, like, make a, make a big change in your life or to, like, do something different, to see something from a different way. But the biggest energy that I'm hearing is sacrifice. And what we have here is answering the call. This card, the sacred or the sacred track, the sacred traveler oracle card here is the summation of your energy for February. And it's also the lesson and whatever this month is meant to bring you. And with answering the call, I've been told to read that to you guys because the energy in the hangman is very, very like on point. So I'm going to read answering the call for you guys. The time is now. You've been called. The sacred journey always start with a call. You might feel ready or you might be uncertain and not willing. But when you receive the call, you must respond. If you've been waiting for your life to turn out, the waiting is over. Your true and authentic life is happening. If you've been hoping for a sign, this is it. Right now you've been called and the gateway is opening for communications from the spirit realms. The energy of courage surrounds you. You may not know what the future brings, but you do know that now that it is now time to act and go forward. The sacred traveler wants you to know that spirit is trying to get your attention right now. And spirit helpers are telling you that this is your time. Listen with your heart. Your time is now. Do it now. <laughs> Throw your shoulders back. Take a deep breath and plunge forward. The waiting is over. No matter what concerns or hesitations you may have, in the deepest sense, you are ready. Believe. Trust. Follow the signs. There will be many, and miracles will abound. So, yeah, pal, too. Like, that's very, very telling. Like, something is about, this month is about something happening, a big shift happening in your life. And like I said, with the hangman, like, it's going to be a shifting in perspective, but a sacrifice has to be made. And what you're going to have to sacrifice is your present comfort or even present discomfort. Because either way, you guys are in a period of waiting. I'm hearing in vitro. Like you could, like I'm, I'm feeling and I'm seeing like the energy of a womb. You guys could really just be like lying in wait right now for something to really pop off. And this card is telling you that something is going to pop off this month. So follow the signs and be ready because something, something big is happening for you guys this month. We start off with the High Priestess for your first week of February. Your second week of February is the Moon. Your third week of February is the Devil. And then your fourth week of February is Death. So, right off the gate, we starting off with the High Priestess. Something is going to really spark your intuition for the first week of February. And even the fact that we have the second week of February being the Moon... This is going to be something that's really going to continue on for like the first two weeks of February. There's going to be a strong intuitive guidance, strong intuitive communication, and you're just going to be feeling called. You're just going to be feeling a pull to do this, a pull to do that. Something that you probably can't explain or that you won't be able to explain pal to. But the fact of the matter is now is not the time to look for the logic in your actions just to simply do it. No matter what it is, no matter how trivial it may seem. Um, for you guys, I'm going to give you the day by day for the first week. Because I feel like you guys are going to need the first week to get the ball up and running. So let's see what, we, what we're going to get. These energies for the first week of February. For my pal twos. First week of February for pal twos. Split the deck. Sorry, I'm being led to like really split the deck and really jumble up the energies for this. Like this is going to be very, very different for you guys. Like this is going to be something new. Like you're going to be guided, like heavily, heavily intuitively guided to do something. And just like I'm just even being guided right now to just really listen to my intuition and listen to my guidance and just split the deck in odd ways and do this and do that. You guys are going to have to really learn. If this is not something that you are used to doing, you're going to have to learn in fast. 
on how to listen to your intuition and how to allow yourself to be guided by it. Yes. Let's keep plucking from the top. Yeah. All right. Let's move these a little bit more over to the side so I can make sure that everything is in frame. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. So what I did was each one of these cards represent a day in the week. Um, I was told in pile one to start the week with a Sunday. So on the first Sunday of February, you guys are going to feel a, a, a burst of power, a burst of energy deep inside of you. You're going to feel like you can tackle anything and by golly, Whatever it is that you feel any energy to do, you need to get up and do it. I can't stress that enough. Whatever it is that you feel guided or feel called to do, do it because you need to. Because um, on the next day, on the Monday, we have the card of control with Jupiter and Capricorn. The Jupiter and Capricorn card talks about needing to manifest your will and your discipline to achieve something. And when you decide to sit down, focus and direct your energy into something, you will be getting abundance. Uh, the Jupiter card also talks, the Jupiter and Capricorn card, the card of control, also talks about taking responsibility for your life. That wherever you are now, whether you're happy or unhappy with your life, just know that this you were led to this point for your for because of your decisions. And one of the best things that you need to realize is that since you got yourself to this point with your decisions, if you continue to make the proper decisions going, if you make the proper decisions going forward, you can always change and like shape your situation. You are in control of your of, of how your destiny shapes and plays out. Your spirit guides are here to guide you down the most optimal path for your destiny. But there is an energy here, especially with the risk card the next day. There's an energy here that your bravery is going to be called for. That you're going to have to do something that's out of the norm for you. That might be a little bit of a risk. You can choose to do it or you can choose not to. But whether what hap whatever happens for you, pile two, just know that it was ultimately your decision. And I feel like I have to tell you guys that. With Tuesday, we have the card of risk here. Now, the risk card with uh, Saturn Aries talks about not playing it too safe. Whatever this energy is, whatever you're feeling guided and feeling empowered to do, um, you need to make sure that you do it, pile two. Um, the risk card talks about like really making sure that you that you take a risk, but make sure that you're not take, making one that's like incredibly foolish. Again, you are going to be intuitively guided since the energy of the high priestess is overseeing this week. This is going to be different for each and every one of you pile twos, but the energy here is that you guys have to do it. Like, you, if there's a risk, if you're being asked to do something that's a little different from your norm, you got to do it pile two, period. The next card that we have is flirtation. The flirtation card talks about, uh, since this is uh, Venus or Sagittarius, one thing about Sagittarius and dating is that they do get around <laughs> when it comes to dating. But the Venus and Sagittarius card also talks a lot about like uh, actually undertaking like maybe a new learning or maybe just like a new person coming in. Um, yeah, it could be a new person coming in, like really having to take a risk and go and go and allow someone to like really in, to come into your life. Let me read a little bit on the events for the flirtation card. I really feel guided to do that. I'm not going to read it aloud for you guys. I'm just going to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says a forming lover or holiday romance that blossoms, a marriage abroad, a lighthearted flirtation just for the adventure. And that's the energy that I was feeling. Like I said, Sagittarius is good around. Maybe you guys are, maybe one of these days or sometime during this month, because this is the Venus card and this card is heavily centered around love because uh, Venus rules the seventh house and the second house of material comfort and of love and romance and relationship. So 
there could be something here about taking a risk in your in your financial sector by making sure that you do it in an educated sort of way, levying your skills and what you've learned in your life and what you, and the experience that you've gathered and like really making sure that the risk is calculated. But with the flirtation card here, there could be someone new that's entering your life in the first week. Like these are like really big and wild and swinging energy that's coming in for just the first week of February. Like this is going to be a really wild week for you, pal, too. And this is just because you're entering into a brand new phase. Like I really feel like things have been really quiet for you on a lot of fronts, pal, too. But things are going to start moving in fast. This could be definitely just a brand new lover coming in. And on the next day of, let me see, this is Thursday. And on Thursday, you have the energy of impulsiveness. One thing that I noticed just from calming down and looking at the energies, there's a lot of ones in here. A one, a ten that also boils down to one, another one, a nine, a one, a seven, and a nine. Like there's a lot of energies around like the brand new beginning and around like you and yourself. Like, because the first house is all about you and yourself, about having the energy and how you're presented into the world, pile too. And then the seventh house is about relationships. And then we have two cards with Sagittarius. Um, one of the other things that I'm feeling for you guys is that you could be called to travel. Like, one of the risks that you might have to take is traveling abroad or like traveling to a different, to a foreign place, going really far to travel, pile too. I don't know. This is going to be really different from each of you, and I'm just channeling different energies and different predictions. For some people, it could be a relationship with someone that's foreign, or it could just be a flirting with just someone new, or it could be like having to travel abroad. But either way, with the impulsiveness card, you need to make sure that you do it with gusto. <laughs> do it with bravery. Um, I don't know if you guys watch Demon Slayer, but I'm hearing like the energy of Tengen. And he's just saying, like, do it, do it in a flashy way. Like, <laughs> it's time for you to be flashy, to be bold, to be exciting, to be different. And that's the energy that you need to do, Power One, that you need to have. There's a lot of Aries energy in, in this in your first week. And this is the energy of, like, action. Action needs to happen. That's what answering the call says. Act now. Do it now. And the first week is all about action, about risk and action. The seventh card, the seventh, I mean, the card for Friday is choice, which is Mars and Libra. A choice is definitely going to have to be made. It could be in regards to, uh, to whether on what you going to, what you, what you decide to do. Like, like I said, I was channeling the energy of Mars and like, it's all up and through here with a whole bunch of Aries cards, two cards in Mars. Like, bro, I don't know what's going on in your life, pal, too, but just know that the first week of February seems very exciting. <laughs> I'm low-key jealous. <laughs> like, this is a very exciting week. But choices need to be made and decisions need to be had. Like, you're going to be thrust in the, into the hot seat, pile too. If you've been feeling like things have really been too slow and you've been looking for excitement, then you're going to get it. But if you've been liking the way things have been going, pile too, then that's too bad. Because things are about to change and fast. And you got to be ready for it. <laughs> so if you're comfortable, you be prepared to be very uncomfortable in the first week. But if this sounds exciting and exactly what you've been waiting for, then the only thing you guys got to do is just follow your intuition and you're going to be A-OK. -okay. I really feel like the choice is going to be easy for those of you who are excited. And the, the choice could be to like go and travel. To like really go abroad. To take this whatever this risky opportunity that you've been flirting with whatever that risky opportunity is, and go for it. Because at the end, you're going to find fulfillment in it. This talks about, there's no there's no coincidence that we have like the Venus and in, in, uh, Sagittarius and ended with Saturn and Sagittarius. You're going to find contentment and fulfillment by going abroad. Whether it's doing business abroad, whether it's dating someone from a foreign country that's, in a, that's really far from you, do long distance traveling, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna achieve, you're gonna get something. You're gonna find a sense of fulfillment, whether it's through business business dealings uh, abroad or whether it's just like taking a chance on dating someone that's abroad. Don't let your past hold you back, pal pal two. Don't let your past hold you back. And a personal issue reaches resolution. Like yeah, pal two. I really feel like you guys have been like just like sitting here waiting for something amazing to happen. I see that little boy from Incredibles and you know 
<laughs> Someone says, well, what are you looking? What are you waiting for? And he says, I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. Like, that's you guys. You guys have been so bored and so ready for a shift and a change in your life. And it's time for you to go ahead and do it. But you got to do it with bravery. Don't let your past hold you back. Don't let previous experiences like keep you from embracing and taking this risk and going forward and make an impulsive decision for once in your life, pile two. Because that's what's going to bring an, uh, an end to a personal problem that you've been having. It's taking a risk. And I'm hearing like the Kelly Clarkson song, Break Away. So let's get a star code for the first week. Like, geez, pile two. Like, your reading has really been holding me up <laughs> just for the first week alone. Like, there's so much, like, quick and dynamic energies. Like, it's really exciting. I'm excited for you, goddammit. <laughs> like, this is great energy. I'm happy. Oh, boy. And here we have Taurus. Cultivate. Funny thing about Taurus is it rules the second house. It's also ruled by Venus. Um, with the Cultivate card here... Like I said, now it's the time for you to like get to work and like really put forth the energy in your material realm. Because at the bottom card, we had debilitated, which was discomfort. It's going to probably push you out of your comfort zone. It's probably going to be something that you don't really feel like you're prepared for, that you're ready to do, pile to. But do what you must and do what you will. All right. So with that out of the way, let's get into the second week. The second week is the moon card. What I see here is with the ship, the ship speaks of voyages and long tra and long distance traveling, traveling by water or like really just going on like a very long and spiritually led journey. One thing about the moon card is that the moon card is a mystery. Here I see the energy of Pisces and I think also Aquarius in the moon card. And this is going to be about like really allowing your intuition to lead the way. For, as you can see in the background of this card, there's a guy walking on a tightrope. That's going to be you, pal, too. You're really going to be thrusted into an adventure. And it might be an adventure that's really going to take you to a long distance, to a long distance place or to somewhere that's really out of your norm. The energy of really following your intuition is prevalent all throughout this. And even with the theme of answer the call. Answering the call talks about your spirit guides and spirit helpers communicating with you and reaching out to you at this time. And you're going to really feel intuitively guided this entire month. This is the energy that's really going to be prevalent. I really feel like I'm reading an adventure story right now, Pile 2, of someone who's just coming from this boring humdrum place and is really just being thrusted on this fantastical adventure by chance. By chance, by just a miracle or something coming in or them just deciding that they want to see a change in their life and just deciding to do it uh, by receiving a knock on their door and they decide to answer that door. And by answering that knock on their door, they led on to a brand new journey or to a different place. I also seen the red pill, blue pill with Morpheus. Whatever it is, is going to be something that's really going to change your life, pal, too. This is very strong and palpable energy. So the next thing that we have for the, uh, the next day, for the next week, is the Devil card. One thing about this Devil card is that it also has, like, this, this sacred symbol on his head. One thing about the intuition. But what I'm really seeing here with this Devil card is that fear is going to kick in. <laughs> By the third week, you guys are going to be like, oh, God, oh, God, what did I get myself into? What did, what did I do? But one of the things is you got to stay resolute in your choice and stay resolute in your decision. It might really start looking scary. It might look a little little bleak for you that week on the third week of February. But, it's, but this isn't the time for you to lose heart and to lose faith and to lose your courage. Continue on and press onward, Pile 3. This is the part of your adventure where the real danger kicks in. Like where you really realize like, wow, I might be in over my head. But don't let it dissuade you, Pile 3. Instead of doing like the day by day, I'm going to just pull one big energy. And the big energy that we got here, the two big energies that we got here is the sixth house and square. So what this is telling me is that this is really going to be like uh, just a, a big disconnect and a challenge in like your day to day life. 
your routines are going to be disrupted. Like you're going to have to like really settle into something brand new or like new ways of doing and new ways of living and being pal too. And it really might be a big challenge for you. That might cause you a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, and it might cause like really Ill illusions to surface in your life. But the thing is, pal too, um, this change is going to be not only very difficult for you, but it's also going to be very necessary. And like I said, in the hangman at the beginning, a sacrifice needs to be made. A sacrifice will be made this month. And it might be the sacrifice of your routine. Like really learning how to like change your whole life around by for whatever this opportunity is. There's going to be a big change and you're going to have to learn how to deal with it. And it's going to be difficult for you to deal with it because the energy of the square one thing that I know about this aspect is that square energy is not easily overcome. It's not an opposition. It's not, you know, anything that's like particularly challenging. But I mean, that's like moderately challenging. The square mode is like very hard mode. And with this position in itself in your sixth house, this is really going to disrupt your work, your daily routines, and possibly even your health if you're not careful. And that's what the devil card also talks about is unhealthy routines and addictions. Really be careful in, in the third week of February, pile, pile two. Really make sure that you keep your wits about you and that you keep your bravery strong and really resist any type of like crazy temptations that might come your way that might really dissuade you from your path. Stay strong. I'm going to read a little bit from the square card. Not too much because this can tend to get pretty wordy. And I've already spent a lot of time on your reading already, pile two. These three aspects from the square, the semi-square, and the quincunx, but I just used the square. These three aspects are awkward, potentially confrontational, and, urges, and urge us to grow as we reconcile disparate points of view. Square aspects act as if two horses are pulling at right angles or two cars are colliding at a crossroad. Knees collide and tension pulls between different priorities within or without. A square is formed by two planets that are 90 degrees apart and the same modality, cardinal, fixed, or mutable. And this is just going into that. Um, so let's read the action here. The action is life is a workout. This phase needs juggling, muscle building, and carefree coordination of competing needs. You may feel pulled between one path or another and, put and push to make a decision, but with some fancy timing and rhythm, you may be able to do it all. Working with people who have diverse minds, I mean diverse mindsets, skills, and backgrounds can be challenging. And this is also speaking to the energy of being in a foreign place or doing business or dating someone from a foreign land. And like really having a hard time reconciling that in your everyday life and seeing that there might be a challenge there. But in the long run, these collaborations prove most productive and enriching. Find points of ease. The few things everybody agrees on already and build out from there. Honor difference and expand. Let this situation become a mandala created by the interlacing elements that at first glance may not look like they go together. These apparently clashing pieces can round each other out and create a beautiful symbol of wholeness. Take this image into your psyche and use it as a pattern for interaction. These tense aspects take work, but don't avoid it. If you take a hatching baby bird out of its egg so it doesn't have, it, so it doesn't have to struggle, it won't build the strength needed to survive. A butterfly needs to struggle coming out the cocoon in order to have circulation in its wings to fly. This situation builds your strength. Get ready to fly. Yeah, like I said, this is just all new energy. And on the third week, you're really going to be feeling the challenge of it. The excitement is going to wear off after like the second week. And once the third week comes around, you're really going to be like, damn, this is hard. Wow, this is, this is not what I thought it was going to be. But by the fourth week, you're going to, under, you're going to change so, so much. Like, you really are going to be able to successfully navigate this devil energy in the third week, pile two. And by doing so, you're going to trigger a major change inside of yourself. Like, the, the numbers that I'm seeing here is like 444. Four, four, and you guys also got 111 one, one, or 1111. Follow the signs, you guys. If you see like 1111, 111, 444, or just like a bunch of fours all around, just know that, you know, you're on the right path and things are happening for you the way that it needs to. 
you're establishing a new foundation in your life and you're being led rightly by your spirit guides powerful uh, how to um I've already spent like a great deal of time on you guys' piles, so I won't be pulling the seven day spread <laughs> for your fourth week, you guys. But just know that February is going to be a very exciting month and it's going to be very dynamic changes in your life, pal, too. So that's your reading. Thank you for watching and please be blessed. If you chose pile three, the death card, then this reading is for you. Let me make sure I'm still recording. And we're going. Excellent. Okay, pile three. Before we begin, I do want to give you guys thanks. Uh, you have my gratitude for watching and supporting my videos for so, for so long. Um, if you guys are like new subscribers or not subscribed to my channel, I do want to thank you for even just like viewing this video and for giving it a watch. Um, if you guys want to support my channel, the links to do so are always in the description box. You can donate a deck, book a reading, or even just donate money if that's something that you really want to do, if this reading really touches you. Any way that you choose to support my channel is very welcomed, and I thank you so much, Pal Threes, for watching. So... The fact that you guys chose death for your energy is no coincidence. Uh, February could be a very transformative month for you guys. Um, this, especially since this is the bottom deck energy for you guys. And it's meant to go in conjunction with this card as well. With faraway places. It talks about get ready for new horizons. Um, with the death and the faraway places card. I get the feeling like things are going to change for you on a very deep and personal level. Not just within, though, but also without. With death, I'm feeling like a complete transformation. Like everything in your life is really going to change in February. It's like really big and sweeping energy. Um, we'll get into the cards for, uh, for the month. I mean, for the weeks to really feel like the energy and see if it's really just going to be as, uh, huge or if it's going to be mostly... Uh, internal or external but i am going to read the faraway places card for you guys get ready for new horizons stop playing it safe get ready for new horizons and change and change in your life a journey is complete is completing it might be to foreign lands oh a journey is coming i'm sorry it might be the foreign lands or faraway places, or maybe an inner shift that changes your, your destiny. It's all beneficial. Sometimes we can feel wobbled when we are not in our normal surroundings. However, you are safe and protected. Good fortune ensues. Uh, the next card, uh, the sacred traveler wants you to know. Part of the glory of travel is stepping out of old habits, routines, and the repetitive, repetitiveness of everyday life. It can feel daunting, yet in no small way, your life is a spiritual voyage. Change is coming. Things are not as they seem. There are no wrong turns. Every adventure and misadventure is part of the course. You are on a pilgrimage of the soul. Keep your metaphor metaphorical bag packed. Some unexpected experiences are ahead. Be ready for anything. The joy of travel is that you can begin to experience the, ev experience the everyday as if you are seeing it for the first time. Nothing should be taken for granted. And this faraway card, that, that little reading, says it all. This is going to be a very transformative and very different month for you guys. This month, get ready for, for brand new everything. New experiences, a, even a new shift inside yourself. Whatever it is, whatever this month is going to bring you, you guys need to be ready. Because it's going to happen. So let's get into your energy for uh, every day. I mean, for the week. For the weeks. So for the first week of February, you have justice. The second week of February, you have the sun. For the third week of February, you have the lovers. 
And for the fourth week of February, you have The Fool. Yeah, pal. Yeah, pal three. Your, your February is looking very blessed. It's looking very exciting. And first things first with the Justice card, this is something that you deserve. I feel like you guys have really been going through a lot or probably just had like a very intense period of stillness and stagnation. A lot of hard times. But you guys are, are due for a big blessing in your life. And this big blessing is going to take and take place both within with, and without. Because I see it with the scales here. Like it's going to be a balancing of not only your external life, but your internal life. Your external life is finally going to align with how you've been feeling on your internal. And it's going to be a very beautiful thing, Pile One. So prepare for the first week of February to be very... To, to a lot of things like really start coming in and a lot of good things start happening for you. I'm feeling the energy for the middle of the week, but I won't pull for the first week of February. I'm going to let this be a surprise for you guys. Because like the card says, you need to be packed and you need to be ready, pile two. I mean, pile three. So I'm going to allow this to, I'm going to allow this energy to unfold. Uh, one other thing that I feel for you, pile three, is that you probably were drawn to another pile as well. Um, but we'll we'll see. Or you probably probably just came from another pile. But um, yeah, the first week of February, you're going to be getting what you deserve. Uh, really make sure that you you your mindset is ready. That you really go after what it is that you deserve and what you feel like you deserve. And really know your worth with the justice card here. Because if you aren't ready, if you aren't really like in in alignment with this with whatever is coming in for you. You have every opportunity to just flat out reject this new change and whatever is happening. So really make sure that you are in great energy, that you're ready, that you're attentive to your spirit guide, and that most importantly, you're excited. I'm hearing like the first day of school or like just like going on your very first field trip in school. Be ready. Be excited. Good things are coming. And I say that because the second week is the sun card. The sun card talks about joy, happiness. Uh, I'm also hearing like wealth, like the, there's going to be something really, really beautiful that happens in your second, in the second week of February. It starts with the first, it carries over into the second, the third, and even the fourth. February is going to be a very blessed month for you guys. Not to say that it's going to be all sunshine and roses. It's going to have its own like unique challenges, but it's going to be paltry compared to what you've always, what you've always been going through, Pile 3. Like, be prepared for a radical shift and a radical change in your life. And now for, for the second week of February, I'll give you the day-by-day day for this one. Oh, oh boy. These cars are just jumping out. Yeah, they're just jumping out. Two more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 pal. Pal one. Like I was saying with the first week, you need to decide what's right for you and make sure that you're aligned to this. Because with, because I was told by Spirit to start the week off with Sunday. So with Sunday, the second Sunday, the second week of February, starting on that Sunday, we have the card of manipulation with Jupiter and Scorpio. The thing about Jupiter and Scorpio is that Jupiter and Scorpios find a lot of success in like other people's finances, but also when like seeing the potential in other people and their skills. One of the biggest things that I'm seeing here though is that you guys need to be able to like really discern and see through manipulation. Like I said, each it's not like everything here is going to be completely scot free, but there's going to be a sense here of someone really trying to like bend your ear and twist your mind to try to dissuade you from from whatever it is that you want to do here or whatever or or from this new change, pile pile three. But you have to be strong enough in in and of yourself to resist 
to know like, no, this is what I want. I'm going to do this. This is what I've been told. This is my promise. And I'm going to go for it. Because on Monday, it's the energy of rebellion. Breaking, breaking free of everything that you've always known and breaking free of the status quo of what you know. Uh, pile, pile three. You might have to make a choice to do something different than a lot of people like really done before pile, pile three. And this is on a, on a Monday. You guys are going to make the choice to do something. The Monday of the second week, I should say. You guys are going to make a choice and you have to make a choice to be an individual, to be unique. To resist doing things the way that other people have chose to do it. And really stick true to your guns and to who you are and to who you are becoming, Pile, pile 3. Um, this is a very strong energy and a very strong warning here. Be mindful of other people trying to dissuade you from your path or try to get you to do things just like them. You are different, Pile 3. You are unique. And you need to revel in your uniqueness and rebel against the current structure of things or whatever is going or whatever... Whatever it is that you're doing, like if you are working, like if you, everyone wants you to work a certain job, but you feel called to do a different job, do that different job and put the middle finger up <laughs> to the other people who are like really just trying to like tell you otherwise and tell you differently. Go do your own thing, pile two, pile three. And that energy is very, very strong here because the next card that we have is Jupiter and Leo, which is publicity. You're going to be recognized for the person that you are. Pile three, you're going to gain a lot of recognition. Like I said, this is like a really big shift and a really big change. And it's something that you deserve, Pile three. If you've been toiling away on a creative project or on something that you know you really just been trying to like get off the ground, just know that in the second week of February on a Tuesday that you might really start getting the recognition that you that you deserve. Then this is not just to pat yourself on the back. This is no ego. Spirit. Father, the divine, the cosmos say that you deserve this. This is something that you deserve and this is something that you're going to get, Pile 3. And just know that it's going to happen in February and possibly the second week. You're going to be recognized for something that you do if you are someone that's doing something. If you don't really have anything in particular going on, if you're not really like working on, on something or whatever, you're just going to be recognized for being an individual and being and for your own creative expression, for just like being who you are. Uh, for those of you who don't have like a project that they're working on or or no or nothing that they're really doing in, in that particular way, this is just you getting recognized and gaining publicity and more attention from the people around you, pile three. Just get more attention from the people around you. People are going to really start noticing how much of an individual you are, and it's really going to bring you great blessings. The next card that we have for, what is this, Wednesday? Yeah, for Wednesday is versatility, Sun and Gemini. You being able to, like, really go with the flow of your life and, like, really be quick on your feet mentally is what I'm hearing. Being very quick-witted quick -witted and quick on your feet. You're, you're going to be called to, like, display that skill and to really navigate possibly some very tense situations, especially since we start the week off with manipulation and, and rebellion. You're going to have to learn how to really navigate and, like, really balance energies between you and probably people who might be trying to rise up against you, against people who might really throw some shade and some hate. You really make sure that you maintain dignity, pile three. Maintain your dignity and really communicate in a way that's really expressive of who you really are. And if you're a firecracker, then go ahead and be a firecracker. But really make sure that now you're in the public eye. Make sure you remember that now you're in the public eye and people are watching you now. So don't go all out. Really learn to be versatile in your communication techniques, pile three. Um, yeah, if you're a big old fireball, really put some water on your fire, pile three. I'm, I'm going to tell that to you right now. Put some water on that fire. And learn to like really talk as someone who's in the public eye. Really learn to say what's appropriate. It's okay to be to be a fireball, but don't really burn everything around you. That's one thing that I gotta tell you. On Thursday, we have the card of achievement uh, with Sun and Capricorn. Things are gonna fall into line and things are gonna fall into place. It's funny that we have the Sun card for this week and we have three Sun cards back to back to back. Um, with Sun and Capricorn, this is something that you've been working on for a very long time, finally coming into fruition. You're finally seeing the results and like really getting what you deserve and what you've been working and striving for. Um, this is going to be a very auspicious day for you. 
uh, pile three. This is going to be the day where you start seeing some monetary, some public notoriety, like a lot of things just like really coming into place and something that you've been building for a long time, like the city here, finally starting to like really give itself like a, a definite shape. And on February, I mean, like on Thursday, no, this is Friday. On Friday, you have the resources card. Like, you're going to really not want for anything. You're going to feel very, very supported. You're going to feel very guided. And you're going to really have a renewed faith and belief in yourself and your vision for your life and whatever it is that you want to achieve, Pile 3. You're going to have a renewed vision and you're going to know that deep inside of you, you have everything that you ever really needed. And even on the inside, you're going to also see it on the outside <laughs> that you have everything that you ever really needed. I really feel big money along with this publicity. Like I, I'm hearing like a sponsor on endorsement, like something really big is going to come in for you guys. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be something that you've always wanted, something that you never dreamed could happen for you. And it's really going to provide for you in a way, pile, th pile, uh, pile 3. But at the end, we have criticism with, uh, with Mars and Virgo. Um, be mindful. Other people, like I say, even with the manipulation and the rebellion card, other people really might not be as enthused about your success as you are. Other people might not understand it. And, and now, especially now that you're getting some notoriety, you might really start seeing people coming up and want to put their two cents into whatever it is that you're working on. Learn how to navigate this in a way that's very cordial, in a way that's more dignified. But just know that, you know, people are going to have their going to have their say so. And you need to learn how to like really deal with that in a way that's not really just like flat out. No, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> I don't want to hear what you got to say. Like, no, you got you got you to gotta handle this with some with some some dignity. Yeah, especially since this is Virgo and this is very like soft, virginal, feminine energy. Handle it with some dignity and some grace, pile three. Um, the thing for, uh, for the criticism card is a co-optive research project of a sense of, of position of responsibility in a large organization or a personal assistant to an important person. Like for those of you who aren't really doing anything in particular in terms of like building your own stuff, you could be getting a promotion, like a really big promotion. And now you're in a position of authority and you got to really make sure that you, like I said, watch what you say and watch how you act. Continue to be the individual, continue to be the person that you are, but now be mindful that you have more eyes on you than ever, and you need to, to convey a positive message. Be more mindful of your public image. Um, in a reading, this card indicates a need to be more critical in providing the answer to the question, or conversely, that one is being overly critical to the detriment of the situation. Make sure that you guys are having a, or have a healthy amount of criticism towards yourself. Don't overdo it, but you guys are going to find a balance. I believe in you, Pile 2. I mean, Pile 3. I keep calling you guys Pile 2, but I believe in you, Pile 3. So now let's get another card to like really explain the energy of this week, of the second week. <sighs> oh. We have... A new romantic cycle begins, and at the bottom, the answers you need are coming. So yeah, pile, pile three. This week, the second week of February, something new is going to begin for your life, and it's going to be something beautiful, something that you can fall in love with. One other thing is like with the new romantic cycle begins, and then at the very next week, we have, <laughs> we have the lovers. So some of you guys could end up meeting someone in February by surprise. Like I said, this is going to be all encompassing. You guys could end up meeting someone and, you know, end up like falling in love as if by surprise, love on first, love at first sight type of thing, which does exist for all, for all you naysayers out there. It does exist. So don't discount that energy. Don't rule out your blessings. But one of the things that I'm feeling here at Pile 3 what I originally channeled was that this is going to provide a bunch of harmony and balance in your life. Like I said, this is going to be something that you never thought could happen for you. And this is going to be a brand new opportunity, a brand new thing that you're going to willingly step into. It's going to be more like a dream come true. And you're going to fall in love with your new life or your new life that's being built for you by spirit. Because remember, you deserve it. 
You deserve it, pile three. You deserve this happiness. You deserve this abundance. So allow it in and, and let it flow in harmony in your life. And then finally, for the last week, we have the fool. The fool card talks about embarking on your new journey. Um, you're really going to accept and flow with whatever is happening in your life. By the, four, by the end of February, you're going to be ready. Like you, you've already came in, you've acclimated, you've aligned to, aligned to your new life, and now you're ready to like really go forward on this brand new journey and, and this new life pile, pile, uh, pile three. You're ready to go and go move forward in this brand new life. And the energy is very beautiful. And it's more like, you know, you're ready to embark on the next chapter. You're ready to embark on the next chapter. Let's get some cards here, some star codes to like really get some energy around. Wow, okay, this card really does want to come out. So I'll take that. I'll take these. And let's get a Monology card. Oh, two of them came out. Yeah, here we go. We have conjunction. And this could be a conjunction and alignment between your fourth and your and your ninth house. The ninth house is the card of exploration. And like I said, with the faraway places card, this could be like travel to somewhere, somewhere new, or it could be a shift. But either way, this is could be about finding a new home in somewhere foreign. But one of the biggest things that I'm getting here with the full card. It could be like, you know, you, you finally make so much money or like really get an offer to like move to somewhere foreign or move out the country or move somewhere really far away. But either way, what I really feel like is that you're going to be eager to really go about and like really move on with this new part of your life. Like it's going to feel like home to you with this with this card here. You're going to feel more connected, more secure. Let me put the conjunction card right in the middle so I can know this. This is going to be like with this heart with this lover's card the combining of like your home and like your and, and your life in general like you're really going to feel happy you're going to feel ready you're going to feel guided to like really go on but keep in mind that this is just the start of a brand new journey and adjustments are going to be required you're going to have to really like fix yourself as you go along you're not going to have all the answers and you're not going to be 120 percent ready or like you know perfect at your new life but just know that as you go along and as you continue to shape and change, like from February on, this is going to be you adjusting and acclimating to a brand new life that spirit has gifted you. So be ready and be prepared for that. And you're very close to achieving your goal. Um, I really feel like you're, this isn't like the this isn't the end for you, pile three. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't the end for you, pile three. This is definitely not the end. This is just a brand new beginning for you. And. You know, this brand new beginning is just another stair step, another stepping stone into the ultimate and most perfect way that you want your ideal life. And just know that this is just a blessing from the divine. You deserve this. You deserve this radical shift and this change. And you should really keep yourself aligned to this energy and go forth in the blessings and knowing that God loves you, the cosmos loves you, and that you deserve it, pile three. I have to keep telling you guys this. You deserve this. So go forth and prosper. So that's your reading, pile, pile three. Very beautiful reading at that. Um, so thank you for your time and your energy. And please be blessed. Beautiful. If you chose pile four, the lover's card, then this reading is for you. Um, before I even get into the reading, I just want to thank you guys 
uh, for watching this video. Whether you're a subscriber or not, um, thank you for taking the time to watch and view this video. And thank you for supporting uh, my channel in this way as well. Um, another thing that I want to tell you guys is if you really want to continue to support my channel, the ways to do so are in the description box. You can book a reading with me. You can donate decks to my channel, which I love. Or you can uh, either donate money if that's your thing. Any way that you decide to, to support my channel is A-OK -okay with me. And if this reading resonates, please leave a like or a comment. So with that out of the way, let's get into your reading, Pile 4. So you guys chose the Lover's card, and this is no coincidence. Um, the Lover's card is the bottom deck card for Pile 4. And with the Lover's card being here, I can feel like two different, two, maybe even three different messages for this. One of the messages that I'm feeling is that February is going to bring a harmony and a balance into your life. If you guys have been having trouble with a loved one or a lover, February is the month where you guys patch up and make your relationship anew. If you're single, this is going to be the month where a new love is going to start blossoming into your life. Uh, there's going to be someone that you meet some at some point in this month that's really going to change it. And the third message that I'm hearing here for some of you guys, and I feel like a lot of people are going to choose Power 4. That's why I'm getting so many different messages. The other thing that I'm getting here for Power 4 is that February is going to bring an alignment to your life to allow you to live in harmony and to settle into it. One of the things that you have is finding sanctuary, which is opening to your spiritual source. I'm going to read that card for you guys. Let me show you. Finding sanctuary. This is beautiful. This is like a castle in the clouds. Like, I really feel like spirit, your spirit guides are going to be very close to you this month. And there's something that's really going to like reveal itself to you slowly but surely. Something that's been obscured is really going to become clear to you guys. And it's going to bring like a sense of harmony and happiness into your life. I feel that very strongly. I know my alphabet. Okay. Finding sanctuary. Rest, rejuvenate, tune in to your spiritual source. It's in times of retreat and inner sanctuary that you can truly hear the voice of your soul. Go within and find your inner refuge. Be a safe haven for others. Step forward with grace, deliberation, and thoughtfulness. Take moments for reflection. Profound healing of physical and emotional wounds can occur in the stillness of sanctuary. Difficult situations could be averted by taking time to go within. The sacred traveler wants you to know, sometimes the voyager becomes travel weary. The pack becomes heavy and the journey becomes lackluster. It's in these moments that the traveler needs to step off the path and find a temple or sanctuary to reassess and renew and to remember what is truly important in life. This gives pers perspective and new life strategies. Create a place of beauty in your home or in nature that feels sacred and holy and spend time there, carefully listening to your inner voice. If you've been pushing too hard or struggling to keep going, this is time to be still and nurture your internal world. Listen to the voice of spirit. Yes, it's time for rest and, to, and for alignment of yourself to happen. If you've been like really pushing and going and tired, power for, now's the time for you to, this is going to be the month where you just have to take a break. I really feel like February, yeah, it's going to be a very uh, very nurturing period for you guys. Um, I don't know about much about the action, but we'll get into the cards and, and to detail your, your weeks. So for the first week of February, we have the Judgment card representing the energy. For the second week, it's the Star. For the third week, we have the Fool. And for the fourth week, we have the devil. So just from like the, like the, looking at your month at a whole at, with the lovers and then the four cards that came out, this is really going to be a period of renewal and change. And by the third week of this month, you're going to be able to go out. But I'll also put some, uh, do some, some, some cards on like this week of the devil, because I don't know what this is. I really feel like you guys are going to have to like really go forth and like go back into the world and like be ready to be challenged. But we'll see what we get. 
So with the first week being represented by judgment, I really feel like this is going to be like the first week of February is all about you like renewing your energies and like really coming into contact with your, with your spirit team. Um, this could be a, a new spirit, a spiritual awakening or like the completion of a spiritual awakening and you finally like coming out of like a dark night of the soul and like really being able to enjoy a period of rest, especially since the second week we have the star, which is about renewal. So there's two cards signaling renewal and rejuvenation in the first two weeks of February. And then on the third week, we have like a brand new beginning and a brand new start. You feeling renewed and refreshed and going back out into the world. So powerful. I really feel like right now you're being called to rest and to be and to really engage in very intense spiritual introspection. Um, I'm going to give you one card. I'm going to do your, do your reading a little different, Pile 4, because like I said, there's a lot of people that probably picked this pile, and there's a lot of different energies that this could be taken as. So I'm going to just uh, do what I got to do here. So the first two cards that we have is Scorpio and Venus. You guys could be a Venus Scorpio. But one of the things that I'm feeling here with these with these two energies here is one Scorpio is all of is ruled by Pluto and Mars. And one of the biggest things about Scorpio is that it's all about a rebirth and change. And Scorpios are always very critical of themselves and others. And Scorpios are very dedicated to bettering them lives, improving themselves, and even to connecting to spirit and getting involved in the occult and things of that nature. I really feel like connection to spirit guides and really studying about that connection is going to be something that's very important. Um, and you're going to do this from like maybe a place of comfort and harmony with Venus coming out. The Venus card says that you are beloved. And I really feel like instead of just like taking the energy of Venus in and of itself, I really think that the word beloved is what's really jumping out to me. You're really going to like have to really feel like feel the love and the energy of your of your spiritual source, of your spirit guides, especially with the finding sanctuary and the lovers card here. This is coming into a closer communion with your spirit guides, Pile 4. Um, like I said, I really feel like this is just going to be like a very calm month for you guys. Um, I really might make your reading really quick. Uh, this is just going to be really calm and renewing energy, Pile 4. Um, this is going to be a period of rest and rejuvenation after a long and hard, hard for a couple months. Like maybe you've been struggling since like mid mid-2021 all the way up to this point, and you're finally going to get a break and a reprieve in February of 2022. So this is the time for you to reconnect to yourself and reconnect to your spirit guides and allow the energy and allow the energies to wash over and support you, especially since, especially since at the bottom we have the conjunction card of alliance. Allow them to come in and like help heal you and to nurture your energy. Because you are beloved and they want to come into a closer communion with you. Have faith in your dreams. Have faith, period. Power four. Um, things are going to happen for you and things are going to shift for you, but it's all going to happen in divine timing. You just need to make sure that you hold your, and this is exactly what I was about to say. Make sure that you hold your vision, power four. Keep your dreams and what you want to achieve in mind. And just allow yourself to be renewed for the path ahead. On a journey to achieving them, because with the second week in the star card, you're gonna this you're gonna be engaging in a lot of like healing and a lot of rituals. I feel like a lot of things are gonna happen in your life that's gonna allow you to feel supported by your spirit guides. And I think I'm gonna do a seven day pull for for the second and last week for you guys. Uh, just know that uh, the week, as my spirit as spirit wanted me to channel it as the week starts with uh, Sunday. So this, the second Sunday, the second Sunday in February starts this week. And these just came upright. And this is five, six, seven. Beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, the energy for this week on a day by day is... It's really just a lot of mental activity here. Like for the first three days, you have detachment, bluff, and originality. Two Aquarius cards and a Gemini card. 
with detachment, you're really going to start really separating yourself from your problems. You're going to become more emotionally disconnected from the from your external problems and your internal worries and really come into a place of peace on a second Sunday. And that's going to be, be brought about from you allowing yourself to like connect closer to your spirit guides. They're going to bring healing and much needed healing into your life. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing here, pal, uh, pal four, with Mon with the start of Monday, you get the energy of bluff with Gemini and Jupiter. I really feel like taking up a new task or doing something new and personally and mentally enriching would be something that would be very beneficial for you on Monday. Even if you guys don't know what you're doing, really take the time out to like really start it and like really just do it. I'm hearing like word puzzles and stuff like that. Very, very home centered stuff. But stuff that's also allowing you to communicate with other people. Because on Tuesday, we have the card of originality. And the card of originality talks about like you really leaning into your genius, really leaning into the person that you are. This is a real re a reconnection and a discovering of who you truly are. And it's funny that I said that because in this week, we also had the card of discovery in the ninth house. This is really discovering who you truly are. Pile, pile three. I mean, pile four. The next card that we have, because this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have exaltation with Moon and Taurus. Moon and Taurus is very comforting, very nurturing energy. You're going to start doing things, and one thing is Taurus is ruled by Venus. One of the things that you're going to start doing, pile two, is really start learning how to like really be more secure in, like your, in your material surroundings. I can also see you guys make it a more luxurious purchase uh, sometime this month during this week. Maybe something that you've been denying yourself for for quite a while. You're finally just going to decide and get yourself that luxury item. It could be an air fryer. It could be, you know, a new car if some of you guys got it like that. But whatever it is, you're going to decide to do something new and spend your money on something luxurious that's really going to bring you a sense of happiness. And just know that this is an intuitively guided decision and it's okay. One thing that I'm seeing here is 1111 and 99. Um, those numbers could be very significant to you guys. You could be seeing 1111 or not a lot. And like I said, with the lover's card, the 1111 harkens a soulmate or a twin flame connection. But it's only going to come once you really decide to really get into who you are. Know who you're going to be in this twin flame connection pile for. Um, and become more comfortable and exalt yourself. The next thing that we have here is Mercury and Sagittarius with the ninth house. And this is the energy for Thursday. So for Thursday with Mercury and the ninth house, this is about you guys expanding your interests. Like I said, you guys are coming to a closer connection of who you are. And I feel like you're going to be doing a lot more studying and a lot more learning on this on this Thursday. And you're going to be excited about it as well with your enthusiasm card. Like you're really going to be feeling like the uh, energy shift here. You're really going to be feeling like your life getting better. You're going to be coming into closer connection with your spirit guides. You're really going to be learning a lot more, especially with this energy of the bluff card here. I told you guys to enrich your mind to get into something new, and I predicted that. And that energy is going to start, be, it's going to play out through the week. The enthusiasm card talks a lot about like just falling into your life and falling, love, and falling in love with your life again, and really finally developing a, a harmonious flow in your life. The Sun and Libra card to me also speaks of like the lovers card for me as well, because this is about becoming in divine harmony and union with not with your surroundings, with your life the people in it, and even just like life and nature in general. You're going to be feeling really excited. And, you're, and I really just see yourself falling into your new, falling into your life, really realigning and fixing your energies for you to go forward and to like begin this new chapter. With the full card here being the third week, like, and, the, and these energies like really ending your read, ending your second week, you're going to be feeling empowered to like really go out and really inspired to like really live your life the way that you want to pile pile for there's going to be a, a sense of renewal and that renewal energy is going to take place for the first two weeks but by the time the third weeks hit you guys are going to be ready to like go out to come out your shell to come out your cocoon and go out and experience life on a much deeper scale or probably to just go forward or continue to go forward with the things that you've been researching and learning, learning about in the second week of February. You're finally going to decide, you're going to decide to like really just 
to, to learn by doing and not just learn by reading. Um, let me pull some energies for your uh, third week of February, Pile 4, just so you guys can feel supported. This is very calming energy. This is this is like very, very common energy. And I feel like this is like really, really good. Like this is just like <clears throat> food for the soul, Pile 4. I feel like you guys could use some food for the soul progressions journey. Like I said, when I was saying about things about your life and your new your new thing having to play out in divine timing, that's exactly what the progression cards talk about. It's like your journey is already destined and everything is going to happen in a time that is ordained, especially with the fact that you can see the clock in the corner here. I don't know if I'm holding this up for you guys right, but the fact that you can even see the clock in the corner here, like... Things are going to happen in, in the timing that is meant to happen for you guys. So just learn to like really fall into the energy of your life. Um, to really get out of the energy of discomfort. And this is exactly what the first two weeks were preparing you for. Was for you to get out of the discomfort that you've been feeling. And really accept your journey for what it is, Paul for. That's something that's, that's needed here. Ooh, and one more card. Vesta. Hurt. Vesta talks a lot about like your home life. I think Vesta is, no, I'm going to read Vesta, but I really feel like Vesta talks a lot about your home life because it is about the hearth and the home. Being more comfortable with your life in general and being comfortable with the things that happen in it. Vesta calls you to be a hearth fire to share, for, to, to share yourself for the benefit of all, but still have enough energy to live healthily and give again another day. The second largest and brightest asteroid between Jupiter and Mars was named after Vesta. The oldest goddess of hearth, home, and family. In the center of a strong community, the fire in her temple was never allowed to go out, and the fire in the hearth of every home was sacred to her. She did not get involved in politics or the misadventures of the other gods. Evaluate yourself in your life. Each human's task is to help reduce the total suffering on earth and to increase the total joy. That's that, that Sun and Libra card with the harmony. And also the energy of the lovers. Um, your joy and suffering matters as much, neither more nor less than anyone else's. Do not burn yourself up for another's, call, another's cause, nor withhold your warmth, but share what you have to offer. This is not a situation where you need to take sides. Come back to the center, to the flame, to your hearth and your core values. Focus on that center flame instead of, of, the, of the personalities involved. Remember what matters. Find that deep calm within. Light a candle with a prayer and use it to bring your focus to the center and let the rest fall away. Then decide, advise, and operate from there. It may be time to take a retreat, a chance to clear yourself, clear your energy fields, cleanse your environment, reclaim and reclaim your temple. If a relationship is truly of value and importance to your soul, the person or team you're involved with will honor your process. Find the temple within, the place of quiet safety where you can tend to the fire and carry the sacred temple with you always. Yeah, Pile 4. What I was saying, yeah, it, yeah, this, whole, this whole reading is all about renewal, discovering yourself and feeling supported in your life and having like your energies like really come back to you and to really be restored. Like this is this fe this month of February is gonna be a restoration of your energies and a preparation for your journey ahead is what I'm feeling. Like you need this moment because you've been burning yourself out, pal, pal for you've been burning yourself out and you need to take this whole month or like at least the first two weeks of this month, first three, okay, the first three weeks of this month to like really relax because adjustments are required. And it's time for you to take the energy to relax and to like correct your course. And then finally for the fourth week, we have the devil. And I'm wondering what the devil is doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the energy for your week and see what I can suss out.
Hmm. And we have loss at the bottom deck. Let me pull one of these just to see what comes out. Hold your vision, just do not want to go away, huh? Okay, the seventh, the, the fourth week of February is all about you feeling like you're appreciated in your, in your life. I really feel like this is going to, like I said, if you're in a relationship and you're renewing your relationship, then the fourth week of February is going to be a test of that. Um, with the appreciation coming here starting the week, you really want to feel a sense of appreciation that what you do in the house and the home, that the person that you are is truly seen and valued. And that's going to be the energy that you're in on a or Sunday. And you're going to be with, uh, be with yourself. But with the energy of resistance on Monday, there might be something that happens that really challenges you in that regard. Um, I don't know what this feeling is. Like, There's a lot of different energies about this. But one of the biggest things here is that nothing is going to come in this situation. So even though the devil is here, don't be afraid. Don't really think that you know your whole month is going to be screwed up this week because it's not. That good energy, that renewing energy is going to be gaining more momentum than this negative energy. Because you have a lot of like a lot of like a lot of good energies here. The fact of the matter is, for the fourth week, I mean on was this Tuesday, you have the card of health. Uh if you guys work out, spend some time working out on Tuesday on the on the last week. If you guys don't work out, make sure you guys eat healthy. Tend to your routines, tend to your to your everyday life. And really make sure that, you, that you're making good time at your work, that you're on time, that you're taking care of yourself, and that you're holding yourself to your self-care routines. The self-care routine that you build all throughout this month. Make sure that you guys are holding yourself to that and that you stick to it. Because with Jupiter and Cancer and the, and the home and the energy of speculation, speculation talks about assessing property and assessing the worth of property. And one of the things is, I really feel like you guys have to learn how to really assess your worth, figure out what you're worth, what you deserve, and really just continue to treat yourself and to tend to your fire with all the love, dignity, and sacredness that you deserve. Um, one of the things that I'm feeling like if you do have a family pile for, you really are going to find like a lot of love and a lot of guidance in your family. I mean, a lot of love and a lot of support and like your close, immediate family pile for. Spend some time with them. Uh, spend some time hanging out with them and really, really engage in that and engage in them. So for Thursday, we have the card of Moon and Capricorn practicality. And like I said, with the uh, with the with the Venus, I mean, not with the Venus, with the Sun and uh, Virgo, with the health card, with the speculation card, now the practicality. The fourth week is all about your home and making sure that everything is in order and that everything is tended. Really making sure that you care not only for like yourself, but to make sure that your environment and the people in it are like very much like healthy. But the funny thing is like after that, like on Friday, we have the card of quarrel with uh with <laughs> with uh Mars and Cancer. So there might be an argument in your home or with your lover or with your loved one. There might be a disagreement or a clash of ideals. But the fact of the matter is like you guys already been given the tools. For the first three weeks of this month to not let it to not let it change your energy, to not let it phase you, and to like really handle it in a way that's like really beautiful. Because the card after that for the Saturday is the card of endurance. Like I believe this is what the devil card means. You guys are gonna be going right back to the grind again. Right back to just making sure that you know you took your break, you got yourself together, you got your life together, you really learned how to tend to your energy and open yourself up to your to your spiritual source. And now it's going to be, you're going to take those skills and take what you've learned and what you absorbed through the first three weeks of February and carry it back out into your life and make sure that you tackle all your negative mindsets, all your bad habits, and that you really make sure that you implement these changes and what you've learned, especially since we're ending with a Scorpio card and we started with a Scorpio card. The things that you really went through in, in, in the past earlier, in the earlier parts of this month, Make sure that you keep them with you and like keep them keep them close because it's those those teachings, those practices, those things that you've learned and like really like did 
is what's really going to carry you through through the rest of through the rest of the year in power four. Don't forget whatever it is that your spirit guides are going to teach you or whatever you're going to learn. Don't forget about the peace that you felt when you started attending to your spiritual connections. Yeah, here it is. Libra, balance. Balance is going to be restored into your life. And you're finally going to learn how to like really balance work and life or like your home life with yourself. This is all about you, Pile 4. Really learning how to tend to yourself just as much as you tend to other people. Especially if you're a mom or a wife. Really learning how to like, you know, take a little bit of energy, take a little bit of time for yourself. And to do what makes you happy. And not really, I'm not hearing like, you know, don't like start giving to your family. But to really make sure that you that you really tend to yourself as well. And this is exactly why I said, like, I channeled that for a relationship. Like, if you guys are in a relationship, Power 4, your relationship is going to get better. Every Your relationships, not only with yourself, but the people in your lives are going to be healed this month. And this is what's really going to come for you. There's going to be a big balance. And the way that your relationships with other people are going to be healed, Power 4, is because you're going to better the relationship with yourself. You're going to be able to establish better boundaries. And you're going to be able to, like, really... Come into a closer alignment with yourself and your dreams, Power 4. So that's your reading. I uh, thank you for listening to this, Power 4, and thank you for your energy and your love and your light. Be blessed, and I thank you.